The NT1 Signature Series is a new studio condenser microphone from Rode, but it's going to seem very familiar. This large diaphragm condenser mic with a 1-inch gold sputtered capsule shares a lot of similarities to previous NT1 generations. Much like the 5th generation, the Signature Series also comes with the SM6 shock mount that does come with a pop filter. It includes an XLR cable that has ring connectors and canary cable, as well as a dust cover for the microphone, a blue ring for the XLR connection, and an I Love Road sticker. If you are familiar with the previous NT1 releases, a lot of these accessories are going to look very familiar. And as you can see on screen right now, the fifth generation came in the option of black and silver, and so does this Signature Series. But now let's talk about some of the differences with this Signature Series, and to be honest, the list isn't very big. The first difference from the previous NT1 microphones is that the Signature Series is going to come in several different colors. These different options include the black and silver, like you've seen in this video, as well as blue, green, purple, pink, and red. Now the other big change, which I think is a really cool change, and that's the price. The NT1 5th generation goes for about $249. The 4th generation NT1 went for $269 for a really long time. But the NT1 Signature Series is going to cost $159. I was absolutely shocked by this. But let me clarify a couple things. The 5th generation costing more will still make sense because it does come with that dual connect USB as well as XLR connection, and it is also capable of DSP through that USB connection. Whereas the Signature Series is just an analog microphone with an XLR connection. And that USB connection is also capable of 32-bit float. The NT1 has always been looked at as more of an entry studio level condenser microphone. So initially, I was thinking that the price would be lower than the 5th generation on this. It kind of made sense. So my initial guess was $179 to $199, because Rode does not like rounding up on their prices. So yeah, $159. But in this video, we're going to, of course, test out the sound quality and see if there's maybe a difference there. Rode states that it sports the same classic NT1 sound, but we'll verify that. But if the Signature Series sounds as good as the 4th generation for $110 less, that would be absolutely amazing. And in this video, I will also include a comparison between the NT1A, the NT1 4th generation, the NT1 5th generation, and the NT1 SS, which I will probably end up calling this microphone the NT1 SS, so I'm not saying signature series all the time. But I will include a short comparison with other microphones that aren't Rode microphones in this video also. And with that being said, this video might get a little bit lengthy, so there will be timestamps. Let's go ahead and jump into just some standard audio tests. If I'm exactly three feet away from this microphone, here's how it sounds. If I get a little bit closer, about two feet away, now one foot away, and now if I get really close to the NT1 Signature Series, here's how the proximity effect sounds. And if I get really close with the pop filter, here's how it sounds. Now since the NT1 Signature Series does come with a pop filter, we're going to use the pop filter while we're slapping some plosives into this microphone. The pop filter is exactly three inches away from the microphone, and I'm exactly three inches from the pop filter. Peter Pan, Peter Parker, Picasso, Planters Peanuts. Now, I still am six inches away from the microphone. I'm not going to stab it with plosives without a pop filter on, but I am going to angle my air past the microphone and do a plosive test this way. Peter Pan, Peter Parker, Picasso, Planters Pickled Peanuts, Sizz. And since this is kind of marketed towards streamers and gamers and stuff, I'm going to type on some really loud MX Cherry Blues behind this microphone. Here's how it rejects that sound. Now if I talk into the microphone and slowly turn it, now we are at 90 degrees. Now we're at 98 degrees, best band ever. <laughs> now we keep going, here's 180 degrees. Now we are at 90 degrees on the other side, and now we are at the front of the microphone again. Now the way I like testing a polar pattern is with white noise, so we'll go ahead and do that. Now just to test the shock mount, I am banging on this Shure boom arm. Now I am hitting the mount of the shock mount. 
Now I'm hitting a little bit closer to the microphone. Now I'm hitting the microphone itself. Tapping the cable a little bit. Now let's do the most important test in audio, the kitty purr test. Now let's see if the pop filter colors the tone of this microphone at all. Here is with no pop filter. Now here's a quick test with the pop filter in place, and here's how that sounds. Hey everyone, here is another female voice test. It's no kitty purr test, but I guess it's needed. Smash the subscribe button if your mom's hot. <laughs> now this is the Rodecaster processing for the NT1. Here's how the Signature Series sounds with that processing on. I noticed it does have the noise gate on. I'm gonna disable that really quick. Now here is just all the standard processing for the NT1 Signature Series on the Rodecaster, but just without the noise gate enabled. And once again, this is with no processing on the Rodecaster. Now let's go ahead and jump into an acoustic guitar and electric guitar test. And in this video, I will include just a short little singing test, but I'm just declaring I'm not a good singer, just letting you know. I bet you're super bummed by these pop filters blocking my gorgeous grill. <laughs> kidding, kidding. We are going to start off these Rode microphone comparisons with the NT1 fourth generation versus the NT1 signature series. The NT1 fourth generation has gone for $269 for a long time. Maybe with the release of the signature series that's going to change, I'm not entirely sure. But the fourth generation comes with the same accessories. For a little while it came with a different shock mount and pop filter. But if you were to buy it new right now, this is the package you would get. But I am really curious to listen to these back and forth and see how they sound sound. Just to be as thorough as possible with these two microphones especially and the fifth generation, I'm going to do a couple quick tests. Peter Pan, Peter Parker, Planters Pickled Peanutses. Peter Pan, Peter Parker, Planters Pickled Peanutses. And if I do get up on the pop filter, which is about three inches away from the NT1 fourth generation, here's how it sounds. And if I get right on top of the pop filter that is three inches away from the NT1 signature series, Here's how it sounds. Now let's go ahead and plug in the NT1 fifth generation. Now I have the NT1 fifth generation and the NT1 signature series plugged in. As I mentioned earlier in this video, the main difference between these microphones is the USB connection the fifth generation has and the 32-bit float and DSP it's capable of. So if you're watching this video and you want an NT1 microphone and you also want a USB connection, the fifth generation is your mic. But here's just a real quick back and forth between these microphones and let's do a couple quick tests. Peter Pan, Peter Parker, Planters Pickled Peanutses. Peter Pan, Peter Parker, Planters Pickled Peanutses. And if I get right up on the windscreen that is three inches away from the NT1 fifth generation, here's how it sounds. And if I get right on top of the windscreen with the signature series, here is how that sounds. Now let's go ahead and move on to the NT1A. Now we have the Rode NT1A, the anniversary edition, going up against the NT1 signature series. The NT1A is currently going for $199. I'm not sure if that's going to change once this microphone is released, but as of right now, $199 versus $159. Pretty much all of the NT1 series microphones come with an identical shock mount and pop filter. The NT1A is known for having the treble frequencies, the high end being a bit more hyped. But here's just a real quick back and forth between the NT1A and the NT1 Signature Series. Now I'm going to jump into some quick comparisons that aren't Rode microphones. This first microphone, the King B2, was the first microphone that came to mind once I heard the NT1 Signature Series price tag. The King B2 goes for $169.99 versus $159. So the King B2 is slightly more expensive, but when it comes to accessories and everything, these two packages are pretty much identical. 
I think the only difference is that the King B2 doesn't come with a cable. But the King B2 does have a little pop filter that's attached to it right now. There are kind of mixed reviews on the pop filter. So I did take the pop filter off because some people do think it alters the sound in a negative way. And now here's the sound of both of these microphones without their provided pop filters. Now you are listening to the Audio-Technica AT2035 up against the NT1 Signature Series. The AT2035 does live in a similar price category. It goes for $149 versus, of course, the Signature Series $100. $159. It does come with a shock mount and a storage pouch, but it doesn't have a pop filter or cable like the NT1 SS. But here's just one more quick back and forth between the AT2035 and the NT1 SS. And just as a really quick example, here is the sibling of the AT2035. This is the very popular AT2020. The AT2020 has pretty classically gone for $99. It sometimes drops in price, but it seems to stay close to $99. Now here is the Lewitt LCT440 Pure. This microphone got compared a lot to the NT1 fourth generation because they did sit at a very similar price. The 440 Pure comes with a lot of accessories. It comes with a pop filter, comes with a windscreen. Right now I am using the provided pop filter for both of these microphones. But now that the Signature Series comes in at such a lower price at 159, it's kind of harder to compare the NT1 Series to the 440 Pure. And I'm really curious what the results of this comparison are gonna be. Now you are listening to the 440 Pure's little brother, the 240 Pro. Recently, this microphone dropped to like $99, which I think is absolutely an insane value for this microphone. I believe usually it goes for about $119, which is still a really good deal. It does not come with this shock mount. It usually just comes with a mic clip, but I was just trying to make my life a little bit easier, so I put it in the 440 shock mount. But now with the Signature Series sitting at $159, these two are closer in price than the 440 Pure is. Now here is one other additional comparison. This is the Loughton Audio LA220 version two. Of course, going up against the NT1 Signature Series. Now this microphone goes for exactly $200 more than the NT1 SS, so it comes in at $359. This is the microphone in flat mode. Now I did just enable the switch on the microphone that enables a low pass filter, so you can hear that. But I did just wanna put a microphone that was a little bit more expensive up against the NT1 SS, just to see how it compares. Before I go into the review section, Editor Bronson has to just disclaim something really quick. I do my review section in an untreated room, but one thing I do want to note is I did have a light in front of me that was a big soft box that was definitely helping kill some of the reflections. So the NT1 SS does perform well in that situation, but I just wanted to note that. And just as a quick example as to how much that soft box being in front of my face helped, here is me in the same untreated room, nothing really in front of my face aside from the camera, obviously. And yes, I am essentially <laughs> vlogging with a condenser microphone that has a shock mount and pop filter on. This is actually really heavy and I'm gonna go now. While I start my review section, I'm just going to have it in an untreated room so you can hear the NT1 Signature Series versus a dynamic microphone. There are some people that say you should absolutely not use a condenser microphone like this in an untreated room. Others that, you know, don't mind it as much, but I figure an example between these two microphones would be good. This is the Telefunken M81. And I actually thought these microphones were the same price. They are not. The Telefunken is $100 more. I was thinking it was $149, but it's $249. But if you want to get the best audio quality possible, taking your room into consideration is definitely a good idea. If you're in a big room like this and it's very reverberant, Maybe you don't want a condenser microphone like this. Maybe a dynamic microphone would be better for you. But I think a big part of my review section is kind of just focused on the price, 159. Yes, the microphone does sound different than the NT1 fourth generation. And I feel like it actually sounds a little different than the NT1 fifth generation. Looking back on my last review of the NT1 fifth generation and listening to that again and listening to this video a bunch, I have decided that the fourth generation is my favorite sound, but that doesn't mean I don't think this microphone is still really solid and a very good value. But when Rode sent me this microphone, one of the things they did say is that at this price point, it's going to be one of the best sound quality options out there. And I can't really disagree with that. It is a really solid sounding microphone. I do think that they did gear it a little bit more toward content creators, especially since they came out with those different colors. 
I do think the musician part of me is a little disappointed by the different color options because it really does make this just a streamer, content creator focused microphone in my opinion. It's not that musicians don't necessarily want different finishes, but I just feel like that's more of like a YouTuber thing, which I don't have a problem with. Sorry if cats are making noises, it's, it's a thing here. I did technically introduce her in a little kitty purr Halloween thing, but uh, this is Billy, this is our new kitty. She is super cute. She's a little hellion, but she is super fun. You wanna purr? You're a good girl, yeah. I definitely am not like a purist, like you don't have to have a black microphone. <laughs> Obviously, if you're a musician, you're thinking about getting this and you wanna get the blue one, dude, get it. But in my opinion, I feel like the musicians that I know that I've talked to, they take these microphones a little less serious when they're all colorful. Maybe that's a dumb take, I don't know. I'm a little bit indifferent because I do create these videos. I would consider myself a creator, but I came from the music world. So I just am a little torn by the direction that Rode has taken with some of these new products because they are more streamer, content creator focused. But quite honestly, the colors aren't super important. The sound quality, the accessories, and the price, that's really what matters. And I've got to say that they nailed it when it comes to the price of this. Sorry, cats are just all over the place. This is actually a different cat, if you didn't notice. This isn't our Billy. This is a cat we've been fostering for a little while. Her name is Penny because she is so wise. You get it? Penny, Pennywise. And we also found her wearing a clown mask in a sewer. But personally, I think the NT1 Signature Series is a fantastic deal. It sounds really good, and a lot of people could use it for a lot of different things, from musicians, voiceover artists, podcasters, if you want a condenser microphone, content creators, streamers. I mean, there will be some noise that gets picked up if you are going to be using like a controller or a keyboard or anything like that. Dynamic microphones are going to reject that sound a little bit better. So if you are going to be making a lot of noise or being in an untreated room like this, then maybe consider going the dynamic microphone way. Yes, the way that you sound, the sound quality that you want matters more than that. But that is one reason I did want to do this untreated room test as my review section. And since this microphone is at a friendly price point, I do feel like people that are in untreated spaces that are maybe going to be making a little bit more noise are going to look at this because it's affordable. So would I recommend the NT1 SS? Yeah, I would. And on the BBSAR, I'm going to give this an 8.5. Overall, I am definitely happy with the NT1 Signature Series because of the price point. If this came in at $199 to $229, I would have been very disappointed, but the $159 I think is a great price for it. Thank you all for watching this review of the NT1 Signature Series. I hope it helped you out, helped you decide if you want to get one of these or not, but most of all, Hope you had fun. Stay tuned for a lot more videos. I want to give a big thank you to all the subscribers out there and the biggest thank you to all of the members out there. And also thank you to Rode for sending the signature series over for me to review it. I'll see you audio nerds next time.